To Know Christ, a television ministry of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. Here's your host, Rev. Jeff Peterson. Well, today's Bible lesson is on, well, the battles of God, and this one is particular, how we use praise in that battle. And I eventually will be talking about the battle that Joshua waged against Jericho. But I want to begin by reading Psalm 148. I just love this psalm. It's a psalm of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princesses and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his praise alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. That's one of the things that we want to do in life is to praise the Lord. You notice that as I was reading that psalm that all of creation praises the Lord. Even the heavens praise the Lord. The angels and all the way to the to the sea creatures in the depths of the ocean. Sometimes go outside, no matter what season of the year it is. Look around, listen to the sounds. All of creation gives back to God praise. And so we as people, that is also, we are created to praise the Lord in our lives. And, and if you're looking for a spiritual antidote, if you're looking for for something that's going to really help you in your life. Praise the Lord. There's nothing that uplifts your spirit more is when you give your praise to God. It's the antidote of so many things. When we're feeling down in life, when we're feeling sad, when we feel like things just simply are not going our way, well, that's the time to praise the Lord. I've known people that when bad things happen, the thing that they will do is Praise the Lord because it uplifts their spirit. Understanding that God is greater than whatever the problems may be that we are facing in life, that God is greater. And so we praise the Lord that we are connecting our lives to him. And so at this time, I want to read the story, or at least part of the story, uh, picking up in Joshua chapter 6, verses 8 through 21. And this is the story of Joshua as he and his army now are going into the promised land, the land of Canaan, and he's got a very monumental task in that he's got to defeat all of the cities of this land. Because every one of these cities has got a wall built around them. Every one of these cities is a city-state, meaning that they have their own government, they have their own army. And so the first... The first city that they come to that they need to defeat is Jericho. And so we hear the story. We pick up now uh, at verse 8 of chapter 6. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord were forward, blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord, Lord's covenant followed them. The ark, or the, the armed guard, marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, 
But Joshua had commanded the people, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it at once. Then the people turned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded a trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city at that is in it all and be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking on them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. Then the trumpet sounded, the people shouted, and all the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, so every man charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. You know, that's quite a story. I mean, here you got Jericho, and Jericho is a strong city, and they have their big wall around, and the wall was around for defense. And so how is Joshua going to wage war against this city? Well, God said to Joshua, well, you go and you march around the city for seven days. And you're to blow the trumpets. But yet, for the first six days, there was kind of the silent treatment. I'm sure they're all looking like, what is this army doing? They're just marching around our city. They're blowing their trumpets. And of course, the Ark of the Covenant was with them to show the presence of God was with them. And that is the whole key, is that God is with them. This mighty act of defeating Jericho is not going to happen without the mighty hand of God working in their midst. And so they did this for six days. They had the people that were blowing the trumpets. But on the seventh day, this is where they were to make a mighty shout. And so on that seventh day, they blew the trumpets and they had the mighty shout and the walls came down. Now here again, a lot of people can theorize that as you look at, at a lot of loud noise, whether you are in a stadium where there's a ball game going on with, with a high decibel as far as the noise level, that you wonder, well, at what point do things begin to shake and crack? Or as I have gone to Christian rock concerts, some of these concerts can be pretty loud. The vibration is such, and sometimes I will look up wondering, is the ceiling going to come down? Well, you can make your case for that, but the whole point is, is that God was with them. God is the one who made the walls come tumbling down. And if you're looking for archaeological evidence, you can go to Jericho, and you can see the tells, and you can see where the, the remains of walls that have crumbled down, all of the evidence is there. But getting back to the point is that as the trumpets were blowing, that was praise. 
as you're ready to face your enemies, what do you do? But you pray, and you praise God, knowing that God is with you. And when we think about our enemies, and hopefully you don't have any enemies, but sometimes we do have to deal with toxic people. We have people who are intentional about hurting us. And so the way to go about this is to praise, because it gives us a certain attitude to say, well, maybe the way that I'm to go about dealing with this person is not the conventional way of going about it. But as I praise, God is going to fill my heart with his love. God's going to fill my heart with his Holy Spirit. God's going to fill my mind with his wisdom to say, well, maybe there's going to be a different way of approaching this. Maybe there's going to be a different way of defeating the situation that I am in today. Or sometimes as we think about praise, you know, what are the walls that are around? What are the walls that have to come down? Maybe they are walls of hate and prejudice that we're dealing with in our lives. Maybe it has to do with habits, compulsions, addictions that we are dealing with. How do we have these walls that seem to be so, so high and built so strong now around me, how do they come down so that the Lord can come into my life and to do his good work so that I can overcome these things? Praise is so powerful. Praise is so important. And so we think about the walls, the walls with all their bricks. And so many of these bricks and these walls are, have to do with sin, death, and the power of the devil. And like I said, maybe they are addictions. Maybe they are attitudes. Maybe they are certain people in our lives that continue to, to bring us down or who are hurting us. Maybe it has to do with negativity, bad attitudes, a depressed state of mind. And so here again, praise is so important. And so we praise the Lord that knowing that as we praise the Lord, our whole frame of mind, our whole disposition in life changes. And all of a sudden these walls, they don't seem so tall anymore. They don't seem so strong anymore. And they come down. That's the power of God working in our lives. And so when we think about the trumpet, the trumpet the trumpets sounded... And the walls came down. And Joshua was able to defeat this city this day. And so as I think about the trumpet sound, and as I think about Joshua, and as I think about the walls, it reminds me of what is written in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, uh, verses... 51 through 57. The Apostle Paul writes, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not sleep, but we all will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in the victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so just as with Joshua, as he goes to Jericho, and the trumpet sounds, and the walls came down on that first, on that Easter morning, when Jesus arose from the dead, the walls come down for us. That the gate of paradise is open. There's nothing now that separates us from the love of God. There's now nothing that separates us from God's presence. All the veils, all the walls, all the gates that have been set up, that have divided us between God and ourselves, have now 
come down or have now been opened. And that's the thing that we must always remember, is that our wall of Jericho, yes, it is there, but now that, that, that wall has come down. God has obliterated it. Yeah, the very sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But yet we have to always remember is that God is greater than our sin. God is greater than death. God is greater than the devil. In the resurrection of our Lord, Jesus Christ has given to us the victory this day. Now, whenever you do have a victory, what do you do? You celebrate. You praise. Sometimes there might even be a parade for you. But even if there's not all the big celebration and all of the parades and things like that, you can celebrate this victory. You can celebrate it right now in your home. You can celebrate it at your church. You can celebrate it at your church. Every time you say, praise the Lord, you claim that victory. And so the trumpet sounds. But what the Apostle Paul is talking about here is that Jesus Christ is coming again. And so we listen for that trumpet. And that trumpet is a trumpet of praise. It's a trumpet to announce that Jesus now is coming and it's going to come so fast. He says, it's going to all happen in the moment and of a twinkling of an eye that the dead will be raised and uh, that those who are currently living, that they too will be given the new life. For this mortal nature has now put on immortality. The perishable now has taken on the imperishable, is that you are now a person of God, that you've been clothed with his victory. And you can praise now. And so take that victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it this day. Walk in this victory. Live in this victory. Claim this victory. And allow that victory now to set the tone for your life. Oh yes, the world does come upon us. The world can smack us right in the face. Or we can fall on our face. And part of who we are is that we can, we can complain quite a bit. We all have, we can all have a long laundry list of all the things that we can, that we can complain about today. And if you don't have a list of your own, just take out the newspaper and, and there you got the whole list. And if you are feeling just like, you know, misery uh, does bring company, that you can go down to the coffee shop and I'm sure there's a table there and there's probably an extra seat where you can sit down and you can join everybody else in complaining and talk about just how bad it is. But we don't need to do that. Because you can say, in the midst of all of this, I have a victory. I have a strength. I have a God that is greater. And because of that, in the midst of this life and in the midst of this world, I've got reason to praise this day. Just like the sun, the moon, the stars, the, the sea and all that lives in it, the ground and all the animals, the birds of the air, even the sound of the snowy wind is praise to God. That we can join in with creation and praise God and to bring glory to his name. I have taken a few mission trips to Joplin, Missouri in the wake of the devastation that they have experienced. You know, they had an F5 tornado that came and destroyed a lot of the city. But one of the things that was so special is that in the midst of all of this devastation, as we see all the carnage, all of the rubble, you start seeing new life. Homes are being built again. But what was so special is that the last, on one of the mission trips, I got, I heard this announcement on, on the television that there was going to be a Christian concert 
in one of the parks in Joplin. And so I went to this concert with another person from our group. And the people who were singing at this concert were some very big name Christian singers, such as Jeremy Camp, Mandisa, Sanctus Rio. And so I sat there and I enjoyed that because I enjoy all three of these singers, all these, these groups. I, they, uh, talking about praise, uplifting praise. And as I was there praising God, thanking God that I can be here with people whose lives have been devastated. I mean, it's not just the destruction, but more importantly, the loss of so many people's lives. And so it's not only a, a community that's reeling after such a devastating storm, but it's also a city that's grieving because they have lost neighbors, family members, and friends. But as this concert was going, and of course, these singers would always have us join in with the praise, is that I looked around and I could just see all of these people and they were praising God. This Joplin was an example for me in their witness to say that when life has completely knocked us down, we come together and we praise God. Because we have the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can take away my business. You can take away my house. But you can't take away my salvation. And these people saying, we are praising because we have a hope. We believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And with that, we are going to rebuild our lives. And so the people of Joplin, well, what they taught me that day, how they ministered to me is that we've got reason to praise. And what I'm saying to you this day is that you have got reason to praise. There's another story that I think is so very interesting from the Bible. And this is recorded, this story is recorded in Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 28. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. Paul and Silas... They were on, their, on a missionary journey, and as they came to this particular city, they saw a woman who had been bound, bound by evil spirits, and she was a fortune teller, and people were taking advantage of her. They used her as a way of making money. And so as people were selling her, saying, well, if you pay us a certain amount of money, then she will tell your future. And so these people were running quite a business, making a lot of money off of this girl. She was oppressed. She was bound. And so Paul and Silas, as they came in, they prayed over this woman, and, and she was freed from this evil spirit. But now the community was very upset because here this man's livelihood now has been hurt. It's been ruined. It's like, I make a lot of money off of this girl, and now that Paul and Silas have come in, she is freed, and so she's no longer a fortune teller. And so what the city decided to do was to arrest Paul and Silas, to beat them, 
and then to put them in jail. There they were in their prison cell, and they were all chained up. And so what do Paulus and Silas do? Now here again, the natural response would be, how can these people do this? I came into this community, I did something good, and now here I am. I'm in prison. Here I came and I set somebody free from from their prison that they are in. And now here I am in prison. And so can you see where you'd be angry with these with the authorities, with the soldiers, with the guards. How can you be doing this to me? And even I can see where we can become angry with God. God, what is going on here? This isn't right. This isn't fair. This isn't what I understood. I thought I'd come into a community and I would do a good thing and that we would free this woman and if anything, people will parade me around the streets. They will applaud, and they'll say, praise the Lord, thank you. And this would be obviously evidence that that God is in our midst, and that Jesus Christ is arisen, that Jesus Christ is freeing people. You know, you would think that Paul and Silas would have been so down in the dumps, but what do they do? They praise God. They're singing hymns to God. And as they are praising God, God causes an earthquake. It opens all the prison doors to where the jailer now is going to commit suicide because basically, you know, that was the punishment. I mean, if your prisoners go free or if they escape somehow, that's the penalty. So, I mean, this jailer is in a lot of trouble. What does Paul say? We are free. But we're still here. But it's like, well, even though we were in prison, we still were free because we have the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can bound me up in chains and you can put me in a prison cell. It's all locked up. But you know what? I'm still free. And I'm free to praise God. And this witness was so impressive to the jailer that the jailer became a Christian. And so that's the power of praise. Is that this day, whatever your life circumstance is, whether it's good or not so good, it's always time to praise the Lord, to claim the victory, and the Lord will allow all of the walls that surround us, that bound us, to come down. You've been watching To Know Christ with Rev. Jeff Peterson, pastor at the Lutheran Church of Peace, Platteville, Wisconsin. Rev. Peterson's 12-part marriage series The Tie That Binds is available as a DVD box set. To learn how you can obtain the DVD box set of The Tie That Binds and its companion book, call KFXB TV, Dubuque, Iowa, 563-690-1704. Thank you for watching this program. I'm Robert Snyder. Tune in again for To Know Christ.